So I recently took a trip to Halifax, Nova Scotia, a beautiful city in Eastern Canada. And today I thought I'd give you 10 of my top tips for things to do in this city. I got a lot to say, so let's get right to it. Okay, the first thing to do is to walk the waterfront. Now, I was actually surprised by how much was going on in the waterfront of Halifax. I don't know why a lot of Canadians have this image of Halifax as being kind of this sleepy Eastern Canadian town. This is Canada. We only have one road. The waterfront of Halifax totally dispels this myth. I mean, there's development all over the place. It's modern. There's tons of shops to walk around. It's beautifully maintained. But I guess it was kind of quiet too. Like there's, there's plenty of space to sit and enjoy the water with your own like peaceful moments. Uh, so I, I guess it is quiet as well. But the point is, it's a beautiful area. It's huge. You could walk around it for hours. And also once you're down at the waterfront, you could consider taking the ferry to Dartmouth. Okay, so quick note. I know I called it Dartmouth. It's actually Dartmouth. <laughs> I say this a bunch more times in the video. I'm not gonna re-record the whole thing, but I just want you to know it's Dartmouth. I got it wrong, it's not Dartmouth. Feel free to take a drink every time I say Dartmouth, you might get really drunk. Um, yeah. Okay, so when I first heard about this, I imagined, okay, ferry, you gotta get in a boat, you gotta get on the water, it's probably gonna be expensive. No, it's incredibly cheap. It only costs a couple of dollars, in fact. Uh, and you, what you get for this is not only transport across the harbor, but you get an amazing boat ride. Like the view of Halifax as you're leaving is stunning. Uh, pro tip, be one of the first people on the ferry and you can choose your seat and you can have the best view. And like I say, it's only a few dollars and that will actually get you a round trip. If you don't spend too long in Dartmouth, you can come back on that same ticket. I mean, you can't beat that. But I would recommend you to spend some time in Dartmouth. In fact, uh, that is number three on my list, explore Dartmouth. Now Dartmouth has been described as like Halifax's Brooklyn because just like Brooklyn is across the water from New York City, I mean this is across the water from Halifax. With all respect to Dartmouth, you know, it's not Brooklyn. It's it's a quiet neighborhood. There's not that much going on that I saw, but there is the Portland Street, which is the main street you can walk down. I think it's well worth at least an hour exploring. Maybe find a good restaurant or find a cafe, which leads me to number 4 on my list, visit some coffee shops. When we were there, I, was, I visited with my dad. We went to a place called Cafe Good Luck in Dartmouth. Uh, very good breakfast sandwiches, by the way. <laughs> shout out to Cafe Good Luck. Uh, but generally speaking, shout out to the cafe culture within Halifax because, okay, here's the thing you have to understand. Halifax is on the ocean and most of the year, not the summer, but most of the year, it's gonna be cold and gray and freezing and places with climate like that need, co need good coffee shops for people to warm up and socialize. Uh, it's the same thing when I lived in Vancouver. There's great coffee shops because the city is cold and gray most of the year. Anyway, I enjoyed my time. I also went to a coffee shop called Wired Monk. It was really cool. They had these delicious Nanaimo bars, uh, which I'll talk more about when I get to the food section in this video. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a cool place. And, and generally speaking, I, all the coffee shops I went to in Halifax were, were fun. Moving ahead to point number five, visit Pier 21. Now, Pier 21 is a museum in Halifax. It's actually a national museum, uh, which means it's of like significant importance to Canada. Quick history lesson, Pier 21 is where a lot of immigrants arrived from Europe uh, and really from around the world, but predominantly from Europe, given the fact that Halifax is on the eastern coast of Canada. After the Great Depression, after World War I, World War II, after these major events when huge numbers of people were moving to Canada, they arrived on ships to Pier 21 in Halifax, and from there, you know, uh, made their way into this country that we all know. It's a beautiful building, very interesting for anyone who's into history. And also something really cool, this, this blew my mind. If you go there and you know the name of, let's say your great-grandfather moved to Canada, or the great-grandmother, if you know their names, they have a room in the museum where they can look up the ship that your family arrived on, the year they arrived. Uh, any notes that were in the ship's records. It was, it was a strangely emotional experience being there. And in general, just being in this museum kind of makes you appreciate the country that uh, is Canada a little bit more. But museums aren't for everyone. I know some people visit places like Halifax for the nature. And so I got to give you at least one good option for the nature lovers out there. My advice would be to visit Point Pleasant Park. This place, okay, this place is right on the eastern coast, like even further east than Halifax. 
uh, which means it's kind of surrounded by the ocean area. It's really nice. I mean, there's there's beach areas, there's wildlife. I actually saw deer like sneak up on me as soon as I got there. What else did I see? Oh yeah, I saw these squirrels and I mean, I, come on, check out this footage. I'm like, it's like National Geographic over here. I was so proud of myself when I saw that shot. Like I'm usually not good at filming wildlife. But yeah, that's the thing. This place, this park, I didn't have to look for wildlife. It was just all around you. It's a very naturally beautiful place. And it makes you appreciate Halifax even more when you know you have something like that on your doorstep. Okay, moving along to point number seven, let's talk about food. Now, when you hear about Halifax, first thing that might come to mind is lobster. Oh, there's all kinds of fresh lobster. Fish and chips, oysters, like you can have some of the best quality fish in the world right here in Atlantic Canada. But if you're on a budget and you want to try some other uh, Halifax local foods, don't miss out on the Halifax Donair. Uh, now, Donair is Middle Eastern. It's not from Halifax, but Halifax has a distinct Halifax style Donair, which, okay, some locals might tell me I'm forgetting some stuff. But as I understand it, it's just freshly cut meat inside the pita with uh, tomato, onions, and the special Halifax sauce, which is kind of garlicky, but it's got its own thing going on. It's simple, it's delicious. I had like three of them in my three days in Halifax and it was great. I would also say Halifax has a surprisingly good pizza scene. That's not something I usually think about with Halifax, but I saw all these pizza restaurants everywhere you go. But also it's a very international place. You can find whatever kind of food you want. Uh, one place I went to was Brewer's Market, which is uh, actually gonna lead into point number eight when I talk about the best drinks to have in Halifax. Uh, Brewer's Market was the home to the Alexander Keith's Brewery, which is a famous Canadian brewery. Uh, so this place has been here for like, you know, over 200 years, something crazy like that. It's an old building that's been converted into spaces for restaurants and shops and stuff. So it's really cool walking around the building, but also you have got some great food. I mean, we, we had a couple of meals there and they did not disappoint. But let's talk about drinks. So uh, in addition to Alexander Keith's, you got a lot of local breweries. Uh, there's definitely people like to drink in Halifax, that is for sure. If you're not Canadian, you might try a Caesar, which is clamato juice, clam juice mixed with vodka. And sometimes they put like pepperoni sticks and like cool garnishes on top. It sounds weird, but trust me, Caesar is good. People always doubt me when I tell them this, but it's amazing. Okay, point number nine, explore downtown. Now, we already talked about the waterfront, that's kind of downtown, but what I'm talking about now is just the streets of Halifax. It's a surprisingly beautiful city. You got a mix of the new buildings that are, you know, it's, it's quickly developing, but you have this historic buildings as well. And you have a lot of beautiful parks as well. And the thing about exploring downtown is you're gonna find places like Brewer's Market. Like, I didn't know what that was. We just kind of stumbled upon it. So I feel like there's actually a lot of hidden secrets around Halifax. It's an interesting place to walk around. Some people, you know, who travel think about safety. I can tell you Halifax is about the safest downtown area you're going to walk around. I mean, to be fair, I wasn't out late at night, but just during the day, I can tell you, like, when I was trying to cross the street, like, every single time the car would stop and the guy would wave me forward or the woman would wave me forward and I would cross. And I, I, I live in Montreal now and, like, Okay, sorry Montreal drivers, but you guys are kind of crazy. No one stops for you when you're trying to cross. Here in Halifax, people stop. You got that Canadian hospitality. So I would definitely, I would definitely explore downtown and see what you can find. Uh, Canadian hospitality, that leads into point number 10, which is just to um, ask some locals what's going on. Because depending on what time of year you're visiting, there will be different events. There will be things happening in the harbor and in the city. And people from Halifax, like... <laughs> All the cliches you have about the friendly Canadian, those are not true so much in places like Toronto and Montreal, just because big cities, people get busy in their lives and they got things to do and they, you know, they, um, big cities are big cities, but Halifax is a medium sized city that still has that small town charm. It still has people who uh, are like everyone who I told I was visiting, they, they're curious, what have you done? What have you seen? Oh, have you done this? Have you done that? So I feel like people in Halifax are very outgoing, very friendly, very kind. Yeah, if you get talking with one, don't be shy about being like, what's going on? What do you recommend I do? Yeah, maybe we'll even have some locals to Halifax jumping in the comment section and leaving more tips for things to do. That would be cool. Hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more Canadian content. Also, you can check my old videos. I mean, I've done a lot of videos in this country, but this was my first time in Halifax, so I enjoyed it. 
As always, I'm Dan from The New Travel. Have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Why did I ruin this map?